So if you are to consider um, what refugee uh, status means in the West um, and the plight of refugees, um, particularly in this case the Syrian refugees, um, and how that impacts in the UK, I'd say that um, our probably immediate uh, reaction for a person in the street would be uh, a consideration of charity fundraising. Uh, they see it more as a role, I think, of the charities um, than something which the uh, state will contribute towards. Now, the UK does still give a percentage of its gross domestic products um, to other countries in overseas aid. Uh, and uh, imagine that a division of this is going towards uh, the refugee uh, crisis um, that's um, originating in Syria. But um, an awful lot of the cost of trying to uh, address these problems comes down to the charities. Um, and people's interaction with charities in the West um, is fairly mixed. The uh, Americans are by far and away the greatest givers and have a, a very strong Christian uh, mindset which gives rise to a lot of that giving um, from the general public and corporate organisations and such like. In the UK, um, the uh, uh, general approach is for international organisations to try to encourage small donations from individuals of just a few pounds out of your um, uh, paycheck every month um, to go to their charity and then once that's been set up as a, a standing order so it comes automatically out of your bank account then generally people forget about this and so it just goes on coming out every month. Um, otherwise uh, we get an awful lot of advertising in the UK telling us about various humanitarian um, crises around the world and uh, to be quite blunt, it's something which uh, the public have become quite inured to, they become quite um, uh, immune to. And so um, they, uh, because they are bombarded with these very graphic images of the problems that you get in other countries, um, then they tend to become quite saturated with this and have very little patience for it. And so this makes the job of the charity fundraisers much more difficult. So they've adopted more proactive uh, methods of trying to get funding and so what they do now is they have people um, which are positioned around town centres uh, which approach you in the streets in order to ask for funding and they have adopted the uh, nickname of charity muggers or um, uh, as they try to get your money from you, um, not by violent means, but um, by pestering you in the street uh, to sign up for regular donations to that charity. And if we ask why uh, the West has become quite hardened to uh, the plight in other countries and it has become more difficult to get money from them, uh, the general public, it is uh, because they are very distanced from it uh, and so uh, very often the West will only um, start to uh, provide what they see as their funding and sending out people in the, uh, for expertise to help with these disasters if they um, are able to perceive uh, the humanitarian risk is great and so a lot of the effort from international organisations is to try to communicate the uh, magnitude of the problem um, to the general public and that has become again more difficult because they see it as someone else's problem very commonly that is further away. Um, when it comes home the UK has taken a lot of refugees um, and refugees uh, 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 come to Europe in the hundreds of thousands. Uh, we have uh, current, uh, currently a significant problem with refugees trying to cross from North Africa into Europe um, on small inflatable boats which are overloaded and not suitable for bad sea conditions and uh, unscrupulous criminal individuals take a lot of money from the refugees to put them on these boats and many do not make it across the sea 
um, into the south of Europe and the military, our navies, uh, are picking up the refugees and saving uh, tens of thousands of them every year. But for all of those tens of thousands, many drown at sea trying to get into Europe. Once they are in Europe, they have free movement within Europe, um, but in trying to obstruct their access to the UK, which is seen as being sympathetic towards taking in refugees, um, they um, have uh, a block that they put on getting them across the small piece of sea between England and France. Um, this has limited the numbers, um, but still we take a significant number of refugees and usually uh, your success in coming to the UK as a refugee is dependent upon um, either how old you are, if you're under 18 you are generally accepted, um, or if you come from a country which the UK has targeted the, that they will accept refugees from. Uh, and so commonly that has been uh, Iraq after the war and recently Somalia. Um, and there are uh, concerns that the choices are being made for economic reasons due to the oil revenues the UK can potentially access uh, with future involvement with those countries if they look after their refugees now. Um, other um, sides of what I'm trying to portray as the uh, harsher picture with regards to humanitarian aid and refugee crises from the UK um, is the public, uh, once the refugees are in the UK, have very mixed opinions about them. Um, and it is a uh, significant uh, element of the population who have um, lent the same uh, almost um, xenophobic um, prejudiced uh, opinions um, or simply uh, uh, senses of nationalism um, which have meant that they are felt invaded as a country and they are keen to uh, prevent any further people from entering the country and this may well have uh, precipitated the uh, EU, uh, so the, the UK leaving the European Union uh, with similar sorts of opinions because the influx of refugees, which are not major in number in the UK, um, has been associated with the same influx of economic migrants who have come in from all over to work in the UK. Um, in the UK, once they've arrived, they are um, kept, uh, so they're provided with financial support, uh, which is a, a modest uh, state payment to pay for subsistence, um, and they are provided with housing, uh, again with very limited rights to the same uh, quality of housing that we get as UK citizens. Um, and so uh, that housing can be very poor indeed. Um, the support needs that they have, um, there is funding for from local uh, councils, local government, um, and they pay extra money to organisations which will provide support for those refugees when they arrive in the UK. Um, there is also very strong public sympathy for refugees entering the UK, and this probably is about the other 50% of the population. And the um, strong public support um, is saying that we should have uh, more blurry boundaries and we should be more open to receiving uh, people from other countries into our culture. Um, and current research indicates that with the exception of one study, the UK gains financially in the long term from taking these people into our country, as very commonly the people who have managed to uh, pull together the resources to travel to the UK um, are the people who are the doctors, the uh, university lecturers, the uh, lawyers, the people who are skilled and better, um, uh, so they come from more wealthy families and more wealthy uh, employment. 
Um, and that's how they've managed to get the money to come to the UK. And in the short term, they carry out very, when they are able to stay in the UK indefinitely, uh, when they have been accepted by our home office, then we um, end up giving them the worst jobs because we don't recognise their overseas qualifications. Uh, and so they become our cleaners and our um, people working on building sites um, uh, in the unskilled trades um, and anything else which uh, generally UK citizens are less uh, willing to do. Uh, but over time they settle in, uh, they convert their qualifications, they start to earn some uh, sensible money um, and take advantage of their skills. Uh, and so when their second generation is born, uh, then they are by then usually fairly well assimilated into the population and become quite prosperous. So uh, that is a picture of uh, refugees and humanitarian aid from the UK public's perspective.